Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. If you ever feel bad about yourself, just know that I once went on a date with a guy and then afterwards we met up with his friends and some of my friends and he made a joke to the entire group that he only dates ugly girls and all his friends laughed. Hmm. Thank you, that actually made me feel better about my day. It was even worth listening to you too. And yeah, he made a joke, not the best joke, but at least his friends left, so give them some credit. They do have a sense of humor. Mind your business while I drive, because I... I, pu I pull the most despicable maneuvers. Because this is my time, this is my... Like, I'm driving, this is my Mario Kart. I'm logging in, I'm locked in, and I'm gonna do it safely too, though. Well, okay, good for you. Safety is important. How do you combine despicable maneuvers with safety? I guess that's for you to know and for me to try to discover. But I think I have the perfect video for you. What's a frown in parked box? It's for frown. It's for women. So only women can park here? Yes. Why? Because they're a little bit bigger. The spots are bigger? Yeah. What the f well, there you go. The spots are bigger. Now, I know there's so many different reasons why those parking spots are just for women. But hey, I'm gonna be online the same chauvinistic pig I am in real life. You know when they started installing rear view cameras in cars to make it easier for parking. Yeah, they didn't install those cameras for men. Embarrassing moment for me again. I was at the post office today. And there was this really handsome man serving me and put a parcel down. And he was like, so how's it going? I literally blushed the fact that he was even asking. I was like, oh my God, thanks. Yeah, all good. How about you? Thinking that was, you know, going to spark up conversation. He went, no, the um, parcel love has, has the parcel being sent. So it looks like I won't be leaving my house for a few days. Great, make sure you stock up on cheap wine and batteries. Speaking of batteries, I thought the embarrassing moment was that the package started vibrating. No such luck I guess, but your story was pretty interesting too. The interesting part is, there was a handsome man serving you at the post office. If he wasn't such a handsome man, the story would have been men and their audacity. I've seen lots of people talk about how men are like taxis in that they don't settle down when they necessarily find the right person, they just settle down when their light is on, when they're ready. But not everyone is talking about the very obvious way you can tell when a man's light is on and he's ready to settle. 100% of men, I've noticed, will suddenly propose to the girlfriend they're with or start looking for a serious, serious relationship as soon as their hair starts receding. Men aren't dumb. Okay, they are dumb. But they understand that as soon as they start losing their hair, their value, it's like stocks, they want to sell at the highest point. And as soon as they start losing their hair, they recognise there's a peak, it's decreasing, sell now. So if you want to get married, look for a guy with a slightly receding hairline. I'm not gonna lie, that's some solid advice coming out of TikTok. I'm dumb and I also have a receding hairline. I'm gonna have to go in hiding now. There's gonna be so many women in their 40s putting their cast down, shaving their mustaches and chasing me down the street. Back to me being dumb, what do I do now? Do I go in hiding or do I let them all bask in the glory that is, well, me. Me and my receding hairline. Again, solid advice coming from TikTok, but you do know that even in today's age, men still marry when they're young. Before the receding hairline set scene. Do you also know there are men in their 60s who have been married for maybe 40 years and they still don't have a receding hairline? But somehow I'm supposed to be the dumb one? <laughs> Come on now. How dare a woman take care of herself and prioritize herself and understand her needs and advocate for herself and hold firm boundaries? How dare she? No, but for real, I am so proud of you because this is hard to do in our culture, which does demonize women for caring about themselves and for having assertive voices. Most of us have been taught from a very young age to be givers, to be humble, to not step on toes, to be thinking about how we are co like fitting into a group. And when we change from that place to a place of strength, of self-advocacy, of self-knowledge, of unapologetically showing up and asking for what we want, we're often gonna get some reactions to that. And that's something that you should be prepared for, but not something that should stop you because that just means you're doing it right. Keep going, please. Round of applause for this woman.
Yeah, no one cares. I'll read the comments she just responded to and I'll tell you the problem I have with that. Girl ain't it the truth. People say they're scared of me, don't like me now. Okay. All because I say no now and have boundaries. The problem I have with that is the word now. You're trying to push this idea that somehow society is keeping you down until you smarten up or something. Yeah, society just don't care. No one ever tried to keep you down in any type of way. You lived your way the way you wanted to. It didn't exactly work in your favor. You reached a certain age and now, again, now you started to say no and have boundaries. And still no one cares and no one is scared of you because of that. And yeah, of course you're applauding that lady with a comment because even you having PMS it's men's fault. It is so annoying to me that men just get to wake up with the same amount of energy every day and they can anticipate how much energy they'll have. I've been like crushing it at work. I own my own business. I've been crushing it. Showing up, high energy, ready to go, super passionate, super inspired. Today I wake up, PMS is here. PMS is here. I'm tired. There you go, and I don't even know what's worse. You thinking men wake up with the same amount of energy every single day, like our life is just peachy? Or you finding annoying that you have PMS and men don't? You don't hear me complaining I have a receding hairline and I need to go in hiding now. I've realized that no matter how many men I date in my life, I'm gonna have to meet their family and their family's gonna see me and go, this is a hoochie mama. This is a whole type of, even though I'm not, I'm really a good girl. But if I ever date guys, their families are going to hate me every single time because of how I dress and how my social media presence looks. They don't understand. That's not what's in here. That's not what's in here. It's what's in the phone. That'd be driving people crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, why would their family think that underneath all that plastic is not a good girl? Maybe because who you are on social media, you are in real life. And who you are on both is this, a G and a once in a lifetime kind of person. I hate to break it to you, princess, but that once in a lifetime kind of person doesn't come for $3 a month. And the biggest problem is not what his family is gonna think of you. Your biggest problem is gonna be what he thinks of you. And so far, no one thinks of you as once in a lifetime kind of person. Everyone thinks of you as the three dollars a month girl it's like there's so many relationships like still to this day where girlfriends are like begging their boyfriend to like show any ounce of affection or acknowledgement i can't and imagine. like oh my god like that is just to me it's like i don't want to be like mean right now but like look in the mirror you desperate bitch <laughs> Why would you ever beg for someone's attention or like if someone is doesn't if you're not the first thought in their head They don't want to text you. They don't want to hang out with you f them because there's someone else that does yeah. Like, Are you seriously waiting around for Joe Schmo who's f beating his meat and playing Warzone right now? Oh my god, he's like not beating like any type of like meat because he's like in a relationship with like someone who doesn't talk like you. Yeah, he's playing whatever video games and he's still treating his girlfriend right and that's why she's with him. All of you princesses wannabe who think you deserve the princess treatment are single and can't even find that guy that plays the video game. And for the ones like yourself, there is someone else out there. But that someone else is gonna give you an hour of his time and that's gonna be it. When you go to a boy's house, you just get ugly. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's something in the air. Yeah. Like, as soon as you get a boyfriend, sewer so rat. Mm, yeah. At your own house, single? Huh. Hottie, do you believe in boyfriend air? I do. I think, I think there's some firm logic behind that. Because my original theory was that it's just because boys don't, like, wash their sheets mm -hmm. or, like, clean. But then I'm like, no, my boyfriend's, like, better than me in those areas. Mm. So then I'm like, maybe I've just let myself go. I've feel like it's when I go to a boy's house, I just don't have all my things there. Yeah, you just... And you're not really taking care of yourself because you're hanging out. Mm. And then you leave and you leave like a disheveled mess. That's what I think of boyfriend air. Scientifically, uh, why you're ugly at your boyfriend's house, it's called boyfriend air. And it's a thing, so don't stress. You're not actually ugly. Yep. You're still hot. It's just once you leave the air, yeah. as soon as you get home, you're fine. Scientifically, yeah, there is no such a thing. But let's see, because this whole boyfriend there made the news. I did find an article written by this lady, Sarah Jab. I think I'm pronouncing her name right. What is the boyfriend there? But let's meet Sarah first. Hi, I'm Sarah, and when I'm not creating fun content here on Happy Beds, I'm playing video and board games, cuddling with my four cats, and enjoying some TV. Lucky for Sarah here, she doesn't have a boyfriend, only four cats. So she doesn't become uglier because of the... 
Dr. Boy friend there. Now to the scientific part. Sleep psychologist Dr. Catherine Hall explains what exactly boyfriend there is and discusses some of the strange things TikTokers have noticed after spending just a few hours with their partner. Also, the science comes from TikTok. TikTok users say that before they leave to see their partner, they look their best, have their hair and makeup done and so on. But after spending their time with their other half, they feel that their hair has become greasy and their makeup has completely disappeared or smudged. Well, yeah, that's the 30 seconds of bedroom fun that you should consider when you go see your boyfriend. Uh, let's keep going. They also say that once they are comfortable with their partner, some start to feel like they put less effort in around them and don't look their best. Yeah, you let yourself go. That's the whole science behind boyfriend there. Oh, 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 okay, you came across this video because you want to know how to play the game with a man, right? You're already f***ing losing. In the situation type bullshit, the person who cares the least wins. If you f care enough to play a game, you are f***ing losing. Okay, so don't play games or don't play games by yourself. I would say don't get yourself into a situation, but what, what do I know? How was it? Play stupid games, win a lot of prizes, or fool around and find out? Emily, I can't help you carry groceries because it's implying that women are not strong enough to carry all the groceries. I believe in women too much to help you carry these. I'm gonna need you to put all these groceries in the fridge as well. I'm not gonna mansplain how to, you know, organize a fridge. You're way too smart and strong for that, so. If you could just put all this away, I'm gonna go play League. See you later. Alright, and that's gonna be it for today. As always, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.